All right, I'm Amy O'Neill, one of the third year EM residents, and I'll be talking about my interesting case. So I was finishing up a critical shift um, and noticed on the ambulance board that a patient was coming with CPR in progress, ETA was two minutes, and headed to the trauma bay to gather my team, expecting an elderly patient to arrive, possibly with an uh, MI or some other cardiac cause. When the patient arrived, EMS brought in a 33-year-old female. By report, she had been dizzy and fatigued for about a week and had actually been in the ED earlier that day for a near syncopal episode and discharged to home. She had no shortness of breath or chest pain uh, by report. Uh, her husband uh, took her back home and heard her collapse in the bathroom and found her unresponsive. So, her husband began CPR immediately and called EMS. She was found to be in a V-fib arrest. She got one shock and one milligram of epinephrine. They intubated on the scene and she was transported to the ED with uh, pulses present upon arrival. We received some additional information uh, from EMS that she was otherwise healthy, uh, but was reportedly about two to three months postpartum. Uh, by report, she had a normal uh, pregnancy as well as delivery. Um, there were no other complications that uh, EMS was aware of. So on her initial exam, she actually appeared relatively well by her vital signs. She was borderline tachycardic, but uh, otherwise was intubated and the ET tube uh, placement was confirmed. She was still noted to have a GCF, GCS of 3T without any sedatives on board. On her uh, secondary exam, essentially she had no other traumatic injuries or other obvious cause uh, for her arrest. So at this point we had a broad differential. We were primarily thinking of PE given her recent uh, pregnancy as well as other cardiac causes including MI, uh, cardiomyopathy, dissection, pericardial effusion, or arrhythmia. Other less common things such as uh, an intracranial bleed, ingestion, and electrolyte abnormalities were also uh, considered. So we began cooling measures. Shortly thereafter, she had another episode of V-fib and was defibrillated again. Her initial ECG, you can see she's got some ST depressions in the inferior leads and V4 through V6. She became increasingly hypotensive and was started on norepinephrine. We were able to get a CTA triple rule out, which was negative, and she was admitted to the CCU. So let's take a closer look at the differentials we were considering. First off, thromboembolic events. In pregnancy, this accounts for approximately 20% of maternal mortality. Uh, the risk of uh, an event in pregnancy is about five to six times the population risk. Um, and <clears throat> excuse me, this uh, risk is greatest just uh, at delivery and up to about six weeks following delivery. So what do you do with a pregnant patient who's short of breath? First, you don't get the D-dimer. Second, you don't get the ABG to look for an AA gradient. You wanna start with a chest X-ray and bilateral lower extremity duplex ultrasounds. If those are both negative, you can have the discussion with the patient of a CTA. Um, and if, uh, if uh, the patient is willing to undergo the risks and benefits of that, proceed. Uh, if the CTA is positive, you do not want to give warfarin because it is a teratogen and also has a high risk of abortion. Unfractionated heparin has a risk of fetal thrombocytopenia as well as preterm labor and uh, miscarriage. And so mo low molecular weight heparin is really your drug of choice. These ha this has decreased risks, um, though not benign. We also considered an aortic dissection. Uh, this is also very rare, but pregnancy does have an odds ratio of 25 for a dissection. Typically this is a type A and usually occurs in the third trimester or just following delivery. And usually this is in people with underlying connective tissue disorders or a bicuspid aortic valve. Uh, the other consideration was an MI in pregnancy, which is also very rare, um, but certainly a consideration uh, in this patient. Usually this is in the third trimester or peripartum period, uh, but the most common cause is atherosclerotic disease, but about 13% of gravid patients have clean coronaries, and in that case it's due to vasospasm, coronary artery dissection, or coronary artery thrombus. The management for a pregnant patient with MI is to give aspirin right away. Plavix is thought to be safe, but there's relatively limited data on this. Uh, low molecular hep weight heparin is effective and should be given unless it's in the third trimester, at which case you want to give unfractionated heparin to be able to turn off or reverse if labor should ensue. 
Other management options such as nitrates are, can be given, but with some caution because hypotension will cause fetal distress. Beta blockers can be given as long as it's not in the first trimester, during which time they are teratogenic. And lytic should be given with extreme caution. Ideally, the patient would be going to the cath lab instead for management. Finally, peripartum cardiomyopathy. This occurs in one in 4,000 pregnancies. Um, the risk factors include advanced maternal age, gestational hypertension, preeclampsia, multiparity, and African-American race. Um, the cause of this is often idiopathic, and mortality ranges 0 to 19%. The presentation can range from fatigue and dizziness to dyspnea and exertion to acute pulmonary edema. Often this can be confused with the typical symptoms experienced during the peripartum period, so your index of suspicion needs to be relatively high um, for all patients postpartum within the first few months. Patients with um, peripartum cardiomyopathy need to be admitted for close observation. They also need to have a formal echocardiogram and they should be treated with ACE inhibitors if they've already delivered and other uh, measurements to decrease their uh, preload as well as uh, vasodilators to decrease afterload, uh, decreasing stress on the heart. The prognosis, 50% of women will have re uh, normal return of left ventricular function at six months. 50% will have some degree of dysfunction, and the five-year mortality is 94 per, or excuse me, five-year survival is 94%. Um, women who return to baseline do not have an increased risk of recurrent cardiomyopathy with subsequent pregnancies, but it's not recommended. So back to our patient, she underwent cardiac catheterization, which was negative. She had cardiac biopsies that did show uh, cardiomyopathy. She continued to have arrhythmias and left ventricular dysfunction and was taken to the OR for a total art artificial heart placement. She was in the uh, CCU for a period of time after her total artificial heart and then was taken back to the OR for a heart transplant. She um, did well with her heart transplant and was discharged to home and is still doing well at this point.